R is sometimes like a black box. You put in data and you have results and the next week you go back to that data, you will forget how it's done and it takes another hour to remember how those procedures were performed. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support and practical tips during your PhD. Today I have a question from viewer Anna. She asked, how do we organize all this code from R and keep track of them? If you see my video on R, it is quite popular because of how I am not a good user of R and how I made it more understandable for non-programmers. And I'm not going to claim my channel as an R channel. It's not meant to be a technical channel anyways. But I do have a little tips, maybe not so clever tips, but it works for me. And if you don't judge me, I'm going to share that today. There are ways to document two important aspects. I already have a statistical data organization videos that you can check out later about how I make sure I don't mess up my raw data and I keep every version of my data when I change the way I calculate certain value, I have a copied version and I move on over the next page. So this is a technical video that you should check out if you are curious how to properly document all your procedure from raw data to your statistics. But today's Anna's question is about R because you have to put data in a certain data structure and you also need to set out a few lines of code to understand all your p-values and statistical conclusion coming from this ANOVA test result using R. And R is great for understanding large data sets. You have to make sure your data is readable for R. But maybe most of the time, these are not readable for human because R is sometimes like a black box. You put in data and you have results. And the next week you go back to that data, you will forget how it's done. And it takes another hour to remember how those procedures were performed. So I have a few tricks for you, which I'm a little embarrassed to share how much help I need, but maybe it helps you and you are our beginner. Give this video a thumbs up and it will help the other our beginner to learn my not so sophisticated tricks. So first I discussed already in my R video why you shouldn't use uh, R software, but you should download the R studio version, which gives you all these notes that you can take on the top and below. I'll make sure I annotate. So our markdown is a great way to understand each steps. And you can also save the exported figure for your future views. And if this is not sufficient for you because you don't remember the data structure, the tip is make a tab on your Excel sheet, especially for your R import data. You can make it a bold borderline for the table and make it labeled as data I named DF, saying this is my data table. And the scripts that you have run in the R Studio could also be copied to the next few columns. That spreadsheet can have your data table, all the steps and operations you had, what are the R library and packages required. List them all out so that you can remember them as a protocol. And third is having all the exported images. Compile that in Excel sheet so that you can see the input, process, and export. In summary, what you could do on your Excel sheet to keep track of your R processes could be like this. First, you can have your CSV import data frame highlighted by bold borderline like this. Next to that data frame, you can add all of these R scripts that you have used in the R Markdown page. I know this is repetitive, but I think it gives you a sense of traceability of where you were during that process. And in the end, you also could copy and paste some of the data table that you saw on our markdown. I personally found it saved time for me to open both software of Excel and R. I could just look up everything quickly on this R spreadsheets. 
The output could be simply p-value that you copy and paste it. It could be some data table or a figure that is exported as JPG file. A pro tip for you today is, do you know you can right-click on your tab and change the tab color? Then you are able to know and index your Excel spreadsheet in a more intuitive way. So here are my tips and not rocket science, but I hope this is good help for you today. And if you want to learn more about R, there are a few channels that I will select for you today that you should go and brush up your R tips. You can always comment on one of my videos below and I read all of my comments so far. If your question is complicated enough, I'm going to feature that in the next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.